Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into an exciting and a highly requested topic of column level security in model driven power apps. Have you ever wondered how to control who sees what in your apps down to the field level? Whether it's sensitive data or simply fine tuning access, I'm going to show you how to set it all up step by step. And by the end of this tutorial, you have the tools to protect your data and enhance user experience like a pro. Without further ado, let's get started. On my screen here, I've got a leave request form that has got diff two sections that have to be completed by two separate individuals, the requester and the line manager who is the approver. So how do we limit the access of these fields that are for the approver so that they're only accessed or updated by the approver and the one who's requesting shouldn't be able to go in here and then start making changes to these fields. In order for us to do that, we're going to add what we call column level security to the form itself. What we'll do is we'll set up all these fields to be only accessible or updated by the requester. The approver is only seeing what has been submitted here, but they're not updating here, they're just updating on the section over here. So let's go ahead and do that. How we do that for each and every column, you see that these columns have got different icons in front of them. The column that has got a log on it, sometimes it means that that column is something that has been logged or it's read only, or it can also mean that that particular column has been limited in terms of who can have access to it. So, Let's change on the approving manager. How I do that, I'll select the column and then I'll click on edit column on your right hand side. And then if I'm to scroll down and go to advanced options, I have here under general enable column security. If I'm to check here, you see that it gives you a description to say whether the data in this column is secured at a higher level than the table. So much as we can set up a table level security, we can also set up an, a column inside of, that, inside of that particular table. We can also secure that as well. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just check this and then click on save. So now I'll go ahead and do the exact same thing for all these columns on the form. When you're done enabling the column level security on all the fields, what you need to do is don't forget to save and publish the application or the form itself. Upon publishing and saving the, uh, the form, what we need to do now is to go to the solution, our solution which we have got the application and all the assets here. What I'll do now is that I'll add new at the top. This will be security and this will be a column level security profile. All right, I'll click on that. And remember on our form, we have got the requester role and the approver role. So what I'll do is I'll give it a name of LMS requester role. All right, you can give it a description here for my, for my scenario, I'll just click on save. So you'll be greeted with this screen over here. Don't worry about all this information you're seeing here because I'll explain exactly in detail what it all means. So what happens now when we've activated all those fields inside of that environment, when you're setting up a, a profile, it will give you all the fields in that particular environment that have got the column level security enabled. So you don't have to focus on, you don't have to enable every everything that you see here, because as you can see for contacts, it's something that is done when you're deploying your Dataverse environment. So you don't have to add that to the profile here. But we have to remember that our our tables, they have got the, the hyphen of uh, YouTube at the front and then the table itself. 
So you see that we have got the leave request, the leave request table here. And then we have got the start date, um, the, the leave type and so on and so forth. But if we were to go to our form here, we need the requester to be able to update approving manager. So what we'll do is we'll go here and then I'll select approving manager. And then I'll click on edit at the top. And then I'll allow this individual to read. I'll allow this individual to update. And I'll also allow this individual to create. Meaning to say if it's a new form, this individual, the one who has got this particular role, should be able to do everything in terms of uh, in terms of selecting the approved manager or if they've selected a, a, a manager and then they want to update it they should be able to update it as well and they should also be able to read the information that they've provided so on here the fields that we want for the requester are approving manager leave type so leave type is here as well let me just select it so we have got leave type we have got approver signature. We have got sent for approval. We have got approving manager. We've already done. What I want to show you here is another trick that I do in order for me to shorten the, the amount of uh, the time that I have to spend configuring this. So the first thing that we need to do is to ensure that the individual, this individual is able to read everything that is pertaining to that particular table, which is the leave request. So I've selected all the fields as you can see here and I'll just click on edit and then I can do a bulk update. So I, can, I want I want them to be able to read everything because I don't want to be going through one by one and then clicking on the approval status, the request status and then updating it and then going to this window, updating it. But by doing so, we've done that every column, every column that is in this table, they're able to, they're allowed to read it right but the columns that we want them to be able to update are the leaf type so i'll go here select the leaf type the other column is the reason i'll go here and then select reason the other column is start date and end date so that one is start date uh, end date is already here and the start date is there at the top and then we also have got send for approval and send for approval it's somewhere here and i want them to be able to have freedom to update all those columns but the columns when it comes to the approving uh the, when it comes to the approval signature we are allowed to see that the approval has been done but we're not allowed to update we're not allowed to create all right so i hope that makes sense on how we've configured that so what we'll do now is we'll set up a column level security but this one will only be available, will only be something that is available for the uh, for the line manager. So the line manager should be able, it's vice versa of what we've done, should be able to update those three columns, but they should just be able to read the other columns. So I'll set that up as well. I'll go back. This one is new, and this one is under security, and this one is column level security. I'll give it a name of LMS approver. And I'll click on save. Okay, so on our YouTube um, columns here for our LMS table, just select all of them, update them to read only, so that the, the manager is allowed to, to read what is there. And I'll now select the fields that are that should be only available to the for the manager. So the request status the approver signature what else what else what else the approver comments okay edit allow allow so what we've done there is that we have configured the security column level security roles how do we go ahead and assign this particular role to a user you see here you can assign that role to a team you can also assign it to a user. So how you do that inside of the same, uh, in, in the same column level security, I'll go to users, I'll click on add users, and then I can search for my user here. When the moment I select that, 
I can add them to this row. So now when that person is accessing the application, they will be limited in terms of um, what exactly they're able to see. So let me set up a user, a temporary user, so that I show you exactly how the requester is seeing the information and how the, uh, the approver is also seeing the information. I have now logged in as another user, which is Jendo. And Jendo, what we've done is we've assigned her the, requ the requester role and uh, the requester column level security. So as you can see here, it's no longer Steve, it's Jen. And Jen will be able to only see items that are pertaining to her. So if Jen is to click on new as a requester, you see what has happened here? Jen, the, only the fields that are here, the ones that have got keys in front of them, those are the ones that Jen as a requester, she can tamper with. But Jen, because Jen is not an approver, Jen cannot update here. As you can see here, it is locked here. And as a, an approver here, she can also not sign. So what I'll do is I'll just give it a name to say my manager is Steve, just for the demonstration purposes. And then I'll select the leave type. I'll specify the start date and the end date. And here I'll click on save. As you can see here, I still don't have access to this. I cannot even click on anything here. So the moment I do that, I can send it this one for approval. So now what I'll do in the background, let me just change, let me just add, um, let me add Jen to the approver column level security so that you see exactly how it is functioning. So now what I'll do is I'll remove her from the request of role. I'll remove her. So you to remove, select the user, click on remove at the top, click remove. So now let's add gender to the approver security role. So select the approvers column level security profile and go to users and on here, add users and let's add gen. Now that we've added Jen, let's go, let's navigate back to Jen's window and then see exactly what Jen will see. So as you can see here, Jen is only, is still having the previous access of the requester. What I'll do is that I'll just quick refresh at the top. And as you can see, because now Jen is no longer a requester, Jen is an approver. Jen cannot go in and then start making changes to the leave details, as you can see here. Much as she was just able to edit these particular columns a few minutes ago, but because we've changed her role, her column level security profile, and as you can see here, Jen is now able to approve and Jen is also able to sign. So stuff which she wasn't able to do that previously. As you can see here, confirm, she has been able to approve. So in a nutshell, that is how you can add extra layer of security to your model driven applications. The first level is obviously the, the security profile that for the whole application, which tables do, does the user needs, need to have access to? Uh, are they able to see ev all the details, all the data pertaining to the whole organizations or are they only seeing items that are pertaining to them? You can limit that on the highest level. But for that high, higher level, you're only limited to um, the whole entire table in the entirety of it. But when it comes time to actually edit on the actual co level, column level security, that's how you can configure it. And that's how you can make sure that only this individual is able to edit this particular part and not this individual. And only people that are within this umbrella are the ones that are able to uh, make changes to that particular field. So if you do have any questions, comments, feel free to add them in the comment section below and um, let's have a discussion and if you need anything else in the future in terms of the video requests 
feel free to comment in the comment section below as well. It's been me, Stephen, and I wish you a very good day. Cheers.